All right, we are on chapter six, section five, and we're gonna talk about disaccharides. So remember, di meaning two, so two sugars. So y'all know that when we draw our sugars, we've been drawing them in rings, right? And you're able to find the anomeric carbon. That's the carbon that's attached to two oxygens. Well, even though it's attached to two oxygens, it's still reactive. And because it's reactive, we have one ring, we can link one ring to another ring. And that's how we form disaccharides. So disaccharides are formed when two monosaccharides come together and they come together in a condensation reaction. So water is gonna be formed um, and it occurs at that anomeric carbon. So remember how I said it was really important that you were able to identify that anomeric carbon. It's absolutely true. It's very important that you can identify the anomeric carbon. Okay, so our disaccharides um, are gonna undergo those condensation reactions. And remember, what's the opposite of condensation? The opposite is hydrolysis. So if you're gonna form it, it's gonna be condensation. If you're going to break it, it's gonna be hydrolysis. So I, I drew kind of some simple rings up here on the, on the screen. And so in, when we have a monosaccharide in our ring form, the anomeric carbon, right? That's the carbon, so for example, this one, ooh, <laughs> this one that's bonded to one, two oxygen. This is the most reactive hydroxide group in the entire molecule. Now there are others, and I, I'm not drawing what they are for this particular sugar just because it's, it's just more simple <laughs> that way, and we don't have to look at a whole bunch of stuff, but there are other OH groups there, right? Depends on what sugar it is, where they are and that kind of thing. Um, but we know that they're there. Same thing on, um, on our other molecules, right? We can have all kind of other stuff on the molecule. But if we're looking for our anomeric carbon, our anomeric carbon is gonna be the one that's bound to two oxygens. So what can happen is the hydroxyl on the anomeric carbon, it's going to react with hydroxyl on another monosaccharide. It does not have to be the other um, hydroxyl that's attached to the anomeric carbon on the other group. So for example, right here we have one monosaccharide. I found my anomeric carbon and I look for my hydroxyl. This is going to participate in um, the condensation reaction. The other thing that's going to participate in the condensation reaction is right here, this hydroxyl, right? And so what's going to happen is that um, you're going to create a bond between, if I can kind of zoom in just a little bit, right? You're going to create a bond between these two. So I'm going to, let me erase my highlighted stuff, right? And so I need to do a condensation reaction. What happens when a condensation reaction occurs? I'm gonna make water. So how do I make water? I take a hydrogen from one group and I take a hydroxyl from another group and I pull them off and I take them and I make water. But then I have to make sure to go in and connect now these two so now I have this one's bound to the oxygen and this one's bound to the oxygen. So now that we can link those two monomers together, and I'm gonna show you a prettier drawing in a second. But this new bond that we just formed is called a glycosidic bond. And um, when those things, uh, when those reactions happen, we, we say you're forming a glycoside, that's the molecule that you're forming, and the bond that connects the glycoside is the glycosidic bond. So glycosidic bonds jo join monosaccharides to each other. In general, they can also link a um, monosaccharide to any alcohol. It'll actually work with anything that has an OH group on it, but we're really only gonna talk about sugars. So here's our, here's our reaction, right? We have two molecules of D glucose, alpha D glucose, right? They're trans, so we can see that. And so whenever you're doing this, you want to know which carbons are participating in that. Remember, you're gonna find your glycosidic carbon, 
if there's nothing attached, no carbons attached to that glycosidic carbon, it's a number one, right? And then we go around two, three, four, five, six. Same thing over here, we find our anomeric carbon. If there's no carbons attached to it, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we know that this bond is forming between the oxygen on carbon one and then the anomeric carbon, right? Not the anomeric carbon, whoa, ho, ho. not the anomeric carbon. Carbon four on our other molecule. Sorry about that, y'all. Carbon four, right? Our anomeric carbon over here is over here. It's not participating in this reaction. So when this happens, you see the red, the red OH and then the red H, that's what's gonna be taken and formed um, into water. And so what happens is that you now form a new bond. So you're gonna form that glyco, it's called the glycosidic bond. The glycosidic bond, when you're looking at these, are the ones that are attached to the anomeric carbon. So when I look at this, and I, I could easily see there are two rings hooked together. There's an oxygen between them. And I could ask you, where is the glycosidic bond? If you told me that the glycosidic bond is here, that would be incorrect. Because you are looking for the bond where you have an anomeric carbon that is going to join another um, sugar unit, right? So this right here is our glycosidic bond. Now that glycosidic bond is alpha position, right? Because we have something up and then we have something down. So it's trans. So another way to say trans is alpha. Okay, so, um, and the other thing that you'll produce is water, but a lot of times um, you don't have to write that. You just have to write the, the sugars that are forming. All right, so here, locate the glycosidic bond in a couple of different carbohydrates. Number one is find your anomeric carbon. Then identify where the bond is. It should be between an oxygen and the anomeric carbon. So if I look at my molecule, here is my anomeric carbon. I'm bonded to one oxygen, bonded to two oxygens. So where is the glycosidic bond? The glycosidic bond is between an oxygen and an anomeric carbon. Well, I have two oxygens to pick from. Is it gonna be my, let's see, let me do a different color. Whoa, okay. All right, so I have, oh, that's too close. When I look up at the screen, it all looks the same. Let's do something really different. Let's do green. Okay, so is it the green bond that's going to the oxygen in the ring or is it the red bond that's going to the oxygen that's linking something else? Well, it's gonna be the red one, right? Because this red one um, is the glycosidic bond because here is um, the anomeric carbon. So that's our anomeric carbon. So this right here is our glycosidic bond. So let's kind of erase this stuff. Here is our glycosidic bond right there. And that one, yeah, that's all we have to do on these. Okay, here's another. And does it have to link a ring? So that's the other thing I kind of wanted to say. It doesn't have to link another ring. It can link anything that had a hydroxyl group attached to it. Okay, here's another one. I want to find my anomeric carbon. There are two rings, so I found two anomeric carbons. How do I know which one is the glycosidic bond? Well, can't be this because that's not linking anything. So it must be over here. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna look, is it going to be this oxygen or that oxygen? Well, it has to be the one that's linking the molecules. So it must be um, this second one that I drew. So where's my glycosidic bond? My glycosidic bond is right there. That's my glycosidic bond. And last one, I need to find my anomeric carbon. Anomeric carbon has one, two oxygens. Anomeric carbon, one, two oxygens. I gotta find where I'm linking. Here's where I'm linking. And so 
there is my glycosidic bond, okay? That should be relatively easy. All right, now, identify whether this is a condensation or a hydrolysis reaction. Remember that when you are um, undergoing condensation, you are making water, and you make water by joining the, the things together, or hydrolysis, which is the opposite, is you're going to break water and break apart your molecules. So look at this reaction. What do you think is happening? You should see here are our reactants. Our reactants are linked together. And then we're gonna go ahead and make some products. And so if I look, I have one, two different products. So I'm breaking things apart. So this was hydrolysis, hydrolysis, okay. All right, now, when we link individual um, monomers of our, our sugars together, it's really, really important to specify how they're bonded because it has a lot of an effect on um, how they behave chemically and then uh, physically. So is it an alpha linkage or a beta linkage, right? Is it cis or is it trans? Well, I guess it should be, is it trans or is it cis? Because alpha is trans and beta is cis, okay. So because a monosaccharide uh, has lots of hydroxyl groups that can undergo that condensation reaction, we need to say which carbon atoms are joined and like carbon one, carbon two, that kind of thing, and what orientation they're in, okay? So um, whenever you do this, what you're gonna write first is whether it is cis or trans, so that alpha or beta. Then you're gonna put in parentheses the carbon location um, from the first monomer, and that's gonna be the one with the anomeric carbon. And then you're gonna tell me the carbon for the other molecule, and that's gonna be the one that's, um, that's not necessarily an anomeric carbon. All right, so let's take a look. We got maltose over here. Maltose, I'm gonna find my anomeric carbon. When I find my anomeric carbon, I need to see number one, am I alpha or beta? So I look here, this one's up, whoop, that one's down. Okay, so that must mean it is trans, so this one is trans. Trans tells me that that is alpha. So I know I'm alpha. Now, what carbon's being linked? Well, my anomeric carbon is right here, that's number one. Then if I look on my other molecule, I find my anomeric carbon. My anomeric carbon's number one, unless there's another carbon attached to it, then that one's number one. But we don't have that here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So this bond here is carbon four. So we say this one's carbon one, this one's carbon four, so we call it alpha one four glycosidic bond. Okay, let's look at the next one. The next one here we have up, ooh, and up, up and up tells us that this is going to be beta because this is cis, so beta. Then we wanna find our anomeric carbon and we're gonna start numbering it the number one. And we don't have to number it any more than that because we're already there. In my other molecule, I'm gonna find my anomeric carbon. That's one, two, three, four. So that's beta one, beta one, four. Okay. All right, so let's do the same thing here. I've got a few more examples. So if we look, zoom in, we're gonna look for our anomeric carbon. Find your anomeric carbon, that's number one. They won't always be numbered for you. It's very nice that they numbered them, but they won't always be. Here's my anomeric carbon. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four. So I have it between the one and the four. Now I need to know, is that cis or is that trans? Well, here's up, oh, and we're going up. So up and up is cis and cis is beta. Not too bad, right? All right, let's do the next one. Find my anomeric carbon, find my anomeric carbon. Anomeric's one, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, this one's six. So it actually bonded to one that wasn't in the ring. It's kind of cool. 
All right, so, and we need to know is it cis or trans? So up, down, that is trans, and trans is telling us alpha. So this is, let's see if I can zoom out just a little bit, alpha, and then I wanna say the one that's bonded to anomeric first, one, six, alpha, one, six. Okay, now, now that we kind of know how disaccharides are formed, we're gonna talk about three major types of disaccharides. And one thing that you should know from here on out, any sugar that's larger than a monosaccharide, so we're in disaccharides, so disaccharides, polysaccharides, oligos oligosaccharides, all those, we don't, when we name them, we don't use the D anymore. Remember the L and the D? We don't use them anymore because we're, we're gonna assume that they're D unless we're told otherwise, because D is what our bodies can handle. And the other thing is when we draw these structures, these rings, we don't show the hydrogens. They're assumed to be there, just like they are in skeletal structures, but we don't write them. So that's how they're gonna be presented from here on out. All right, so the three kind of most common disaccharides are formed from condensation reactions of monosaccharides. And so if you have two glucose molecules that are linked together, you make maltose. If you have a galactose and a glucose, you make lactose. If you have glucose and fructose, you make sucrose. So you need to know maltose, lactose, sucrose. These are our three major disaccharides. So let's talk about each one. Let's talk about maltose first. Maltose is malt sugar. So this is a disaccharide that's formed when we break down starches. Starches are in plants and this stuff. And um, the barley is malted so that um, you form these disaccharides because starch is like massive chains of sugars. And so if you break those chains down to where you have just disaccharides, um, then you have maltose or malted barley. And so um, people use this in beers, right? They, they um, those di that disaccharide of maltose can be converted into an alcohol by sugar. And, um, and that's how we use, we make malted beer. And so that gives you, when you, when you isolate those um, disaccharide molecules of maltose, what you're gonna have is an alpha 1,4 linkage. And because when we make that linkage, right, we have one anomeric carbon that's participating in the glycosidic bond, and then we have one anomeric carbon that is free. If you have a molecule that has a free anomeric carbon, then that means that it is a reducing sugar. So reducing sugar if it has a free anomeric carbon. That's really kind of important. Okay, the next one is lactose. Lactose is milk sugar. So this is the sugar that's found in mammalian milk. And there are a lot of people who have lactose intolerance, right? And so why can't you drink milk if you are lactose intolerant? It is because you are not producing the enzyme lactase. Lactase digests or breaks down lactose. So in people who are without this enzyme, um, the lactose, the sugar, remains undigested, goes through your digestive system. When it gets to your intestines, um, your intestinal bacteria are like, woohoo, I got fed. And they eat it, and when they eat it, they make gas. That's one of the byproducts of them eating the lactose. And so that gas builds up in your intestines and it produces really, really painful cramping and, and that kind of stuff. And so um, a lot of times you'll see, um, what's the name of the milk? Um, lactate, right? So what's the difference between regular milk and lactate? In lactate, they add the enzyme lactase. So it's still the same stuff. They just add the enzyme to start to break down the lactose so that you don't have a reaction to it, so that it breaks it down um, before it gets to the bacteria. Yeah, so, uh, okay, so our glycosidic bond in lactose is a beta-1,4, so it occurs between C1, the, the anomeric carbon, a beta-galactose, and then we have a glucose molecule, and in that glucose molecule, it's C4. 
okay? Now, in this case, our anomeric carbon is free, right? It's not participating in the glycosidic bond. So the one on, the one right here on galactose is participating. The one right here on glucose, oh, stop it. <laughs> the one right here on glucose is not participating. It is free. If it is free, what do you know? It is a reducing sugar, okay? All right, sucrose, our last important disaccharide. Sucrose is the most abundant disaccharide in nature. We find it in sugarcane. Well, isn't that interesting for us, right? <laughs> um, sugarcane, um, sugarcane, sucrose occurs when we have a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule that join in an alpha beta 1 2 glycosidic bond. Hmm, we haven't seen that before. What does that mean when we're saying two? Um, two of these. That means that both anomeric carbons participate in glycosidic bond. Glycosidic? That's not right, but you know what I mean. Glycosidic bond. Okay, so um, in sucrose, oh, here, yeah. Both anomeric carbons are bonded, that's why. So if we look, let's zoom in, right? Okay, we have two, two molecules. Here's our first anomeric carbon, here's our first and our second anomeric carbon, right? So now, I wanna show you something that you don't get tripped up on this later. Here I'm counting as one because there's no carbon attached and I would go around one, two, three, four, five, six. Now be careful when you go down to that fructose unit. That fructose unit, when I identify my anomeric carbon right there, what do you notice attached to that anomeric carbon? It's another carbon. So that means, right, that, that, this, was a, that this was a keto, right? It had the R group, the um, carbon double bond oxygen and another R group. So the carbon that had that double bond uh, the carbonyl is not carbon number one, it was the one on top. So the one on top is actually this one. So that's one, then our anomeric carbons two, three, four, five, six. So be very careful because lots of people um, want to name this alpha beta one one glycosidic bond, but it's not. It's alpha beta one two glycosidic bond right there. Okay, so be very careful about that. Unzoom. Okay, so not every sugar tastes the same. We perceive sweetness based on the three-dimensional structure of the sugar, and so some sugars taste sweeter than other sugars. Because sucrose is our most popular in nature, we basically said, okay, whatever sucrose is, we're going to call that 100. And then we're going to look at how much more or how little other sugars taste in their sweetness. So sucrose is 100. Fructose is one that is, um, tastes sweeter. So a lot of companies will put high fructose corn syrup into their ingredients because it's like one and a half times more sweet than sucrose. So they don't have to add as much and it tastes sweeter. Um, then you have some that are less. So like, um, galactose and lactose, those are, those are relatively not that sweet of a sugar. If we look at artificial sweeteners, like things found in Splenda, Sweet and Low, Stevia, Equal, right? All of those things, they have a much, 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 much higher sweetness level relative to sucrose. So a lot of times what you're gonna see is that, that um, these artificial sweetener companies will market their, their sweetener as you know, an equal measure, right? That if you, if you have a recipe and you add two tablespoons of sugar, you can just add two tablespoons of Splenda, right? So actually in those artificial sweeteners, you have fillers that, um, will take up space because you don't need that much of the artificial sweetener in order to taste sweet. So it's kind of a, 
They just want to make it easy. So it's easy to substitute in this artificial sweetener for the regular stuff. Okay, so we need to go do problems. Hang on. Oh, and I lost my mouse during this. All right, hang on. All right, so we are starting 6.32. Identify the following reactions as condensation or hydrolysis. So you gotta remember what the difference between the two is. Remember I said kind of write out what you think it's gonna be before you do it. So in condensation, we make water. How do we make water? By joining sugars or molecules, right? Joining things together. Okay, hydrolysis, how about hydrolysis? Hydrolysis is the opposite. We're gonna break water to break down or break apart molecules. Okay, so let's look at our, let's look at our answer choices over here. Two monosaccharides reacting to form a disaccharide. If we have two that are gonna to react to form a disaccharide, that means I have two individual rings coming together to be hooked together. So that is going to be joining molecules, that is gonna be condensation. Condensation. Okay, uh, formation of the glycosidic bond. Well, what happens? How do you link those two molecules together in A? you form a glycosidic bond. So that is again, condensation. A reaction in which one molecule breaks into two and an H and an OH are added. That means where did that H and OH come from? That came from water. You had to break down water to do that. So that is hydrolysis. Okay, that is hydrolysis. All right, so now uh, name the glycosidic bond present in Manobios in the following figure. All right, so what are we looking at? We want to name the bond. So what I'm gonna look for is I'm gonna look for my anomeric carbon. My anomeric carbon is the carbon bonded to two oxygens. When you do that, you're gonna look for two things. Is it cis or trans? And what are the numbers of the carbons? So here I'm up and here I'm down. So that means I am trans trans tells you alpha okay now we need to number our carbons we can see that on our anomeric carbon there's nothing there so that's a one i don't have to go around in it and number anything else so i can just leave that on my other molecule here i'm looking for my anomeric carbon that's number one two three. Oh, do you see how this bond is going from the third carbon right there so I'm told that this is an alpha one from here and then three linkage. So it's an alpha, whoa, what happened to my alpha? Alpha one, three linkage. Okay, uh, I think I'm supposed to be doing the odd ones, whatever, every other one, as long as we do every other one. All right, for each of the following disaccharides, name the glycosidic bond and draw the monosaccharide units produced by hydrolysis. And again, they should have been over, but oh well. Okay, so let's name the glycosidic bond first. So if we name the glycosidic bond, right, we're looking for anomeric carbons. Uh, and that is not an an anomeric carbon. Right there is an anomeric carbon, right? We have one, two oxygens. Okay, pay attention. All right, so where's our other anomeric carbon? We are looking for a carbon that's attached to two oxygens right there. So we're gonna number this one one. Then we're gonna go one, two, three, four. So that tells me my one, I'm one and four, but am I alpha or beta? Well, look at the one that has the anomeric carbon participating in the glycosidic bond. So look at that ring. It's carbon going up, and this is going up, so that is up and up, that is cis. So cis is uh, beta. So this is going to be a beta, and then one, four. Beta one, four, glycosidic linkage. <clears throat> now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. <laughs> 
I am going to copy my molecule here. Oop. I'm going to try to copy it. Paste it over here. Okay. Now, I want to show what's going to happen when this undergoes hydrolysis. So when I break up this molecule, what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to break my glycosidic bond. So I can go in and just erase my glycosidic bond and then go in and draw what's going to happen. So remember that your original molecule over here, this one, right, is in the cis orientation. So we want to put a hydroxyl, we don't have to write our other hydrogen, but you want to write a hydroxyl in the cis orientation. And then if we go back here and we look again at our other molecule, we're going to have another cis orientation, right? Where they are both, um, they are both up here and they're both up here. So that's good. But now we need to look at our the other attachment where that glycosidic bond was. And what we can see is that one's going down. And so we want this one to be trans. So OH. Okay. All right, let's do the next one. I'm going to copy this before I start to write all over it and paste it. Okay. So we know that's going to happen. All right. Now I can write all over it and not feel bad. So I'm looking at my anomeric carbon. My anomeric carbon's right here. And then I have another anomeric carbon here. Okay. So I'm going to number them one, and then I'm going to go one, two, three, four. So I know this is a one, four. Then we have up, ooh, and down, up and down. So up and down is trans. And so this is alpha, alpha one, four. Now I need to predict my products. So I just need to go over here and I'm going to erase my glycosidic bond. There goes my glycosidic bond. Isn't that kind of nice? <laughs> now <clears throat> I want to make sure my first molecule over here, right, goes in the trans orientation. So I'm going to drop down an OH. Then I look here. Okay, here's my, here's my carbon on top, my six carbon. What's going to happen? It's going to go down. It's going to be trans as well. So I'm going to have another OH. Okay. And you, you could put a little plus sign because it's two reactants. You could do that on this one too, if you can squeeze it in. Right. Okay. All right. So lac, lac, chalose, lac, oh, some days you ever have a hard time just saying something? Lactulose. So terrible. Is a disaccharide used in the treatment of chronic constipation. So its formal name is galactose beta 1 4 fructose. Okay. They want us to draw the structure and then they want to know is it a reducing or a non reducing sugar? So, in order to do this, I have to know my components. My components are galactose and fructose. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you where to go to get this. You don't have to memorize the structure, but on page 232, there's that table 6.1 that has the Fisher projections. So you have to be able to go from a Fisher projection to a ring. So you can do that with galactose. And then if you just turn the next page, they give you fructose on the other page. So this is page 232, the very next page on the top. They, they show you fructose. So I'm going to draw them for you, but that's where you would go to get them. All right. And then the other piece of information we're given here is that this beta tells us that this is going to be in the cis orientation. It's going to be in the cis orientation. Okay. All right. So now I'm telling you, I'm going to go ahead and draw. Whoop, I'm going to go ahead and draw our galactose, so our galactose looks just like this, right? And our galactose has an OH going up and it has CH2OH, OH coming up here. And I shouldn't have gone all the way down. I have a bad habit of doing that. So you only have to do up because we're not drawing the hydrogens, okay. And then we have an OH here, and then we have 
this last one is oh, going down. All right, so this is my galactose, and now I need to add fructose. Fructose has one last member on the ring, so it ends up kind of looking like that house, kind of a lopsided house, but that's okay. Uh, this one has the CH2OH coming off of it. This one over here has a CH2OH, and it also has an OH. This one, the OH comes up, and this one, the OH goes down. Okay, so let's kind of number these. I gotta find my anomeric carbon. Where's my anomeric carbon? Right here. So now I'm gonna number this. I'm gonna say one, two, three, four, five, six. I wanna do the same thing for my other molecule, when I look for my other molecule, here's my anomeric carbon, but be careful. This is the tricky part. There is a carbon right here attached to that anomeric carbon. So this one is one, this one's two, three, four, five, six, okay? So be very, very, very careful. So what's gonna participate in um, the glycosidic bond? It's gonna be the first carbon from galactose, and it's gonna be the fourth carbon from fructose. So let's highlight that. The first carbon from fructose is gonna be this group, and the fourth is gonna be this group. So what are we gonna make? Let's see. So what I'm gonna make, I'm gonna draw my, oh, sorry, I Oxygen, okay. Um, so I'm, I don't wanna draw everything on there. I think it's gonna get a little clustered, but it'll be all right. Okay, so I have coming up this way, I have my OH, but I know that one of these, the hydrogen and the hydroxyl here are gonna to come together and they're gonna make water. So what's left is just the oxygen. Now I know that that oxygen has to link over here to carbon four. So I'm gonna draw a link up and then I want this to hit carbon four's corner. So I'm gonna hit carbon four's corner. Okay. And then I'm gonna draw the rest of my structures. So I wanna kind of fill in the blanks, but I, I just wanted you to see this is the anomeric carbon, right? And then if we do, yeah, we do this one, OH. This is my anomeric carbon. So this is, mm, this is CH2OH, right? So one, two, three, four. So we're linking carbon four and we're linking carbon one with our glycosidic bond, okay? All right, uh, let's finish our stuff, but I can erase the numbers because it gets really messy. Okay, so on my fructose, I need uh, OH coming up here, and I need my CH2OH. And then on my galactose, I'm gonna need CH2OH. I'm gonna need OH, I'm gonna need OH, and OH. Okay, looks good. All right, identify a disaccharide that fits in with each of the following descriptions. So this is just kind of notes, right? Ordinary table sugar, you have at home sucrose, sucrose. Found in milk and milk products, lactose. Also called milk sugar, malt sugar, not milk sugar, malt sugar in C. Malt sugar is maltose. Hydrolysis gives galactose and glucose. That means you have a galactose and glucose hooked together and that is a lactose. Okay, so uh, where are we going next? All right, here we go. So based on the sweetness index in table 6.2, and I went ahead and put 6.2 in up above so that you could see it. If you taste a drop of each of the syrups below, which would taste the sweetest? So let's kind of go up and see light corn syrup, which is 100% glucose. So let's see if we can go up and find glucose. If we go up and find glucose, here's glucose, 75. 
I'm going to put a 75 right there. Agave syrup. Agave syrup is 10, like 10% glucose and 90% fructose. So really, I, I really only care about the fructose because it's only 10% glucose. So let's go and see what fructose is. Fructose is right here at the top. It is the sweetest. So 140 to 175, but it's got a little glucose in it. Mm, let's call it 160, something like that. Honey, 90% invert sugar, 10% maltose. So I'm not so worried about the maltose. Let's go look for this invert sugar. If we find invert sugar, it's about 120. So let's just call it 120. You could call it 110, something like that. Then high fructose corn syrup, which is 45% glucose and 55% fructose. We said glucose was 75 and we said fructose is 160. So you're thinking about something kind of in between those two. Um, so let's say one... 10-ish, right? So which one of these is going to taste the sweetest? The agave syrup is going to taste the sweetest. And that's it. All right, y'all have a great rest of your day.